Hey, that's a look. Thank you. Kevin! Come on, Jeff, for breakfast, kiddo. I want you to fix my breakfast. That woman formerly known as Mommy can take her cereal and shove it. I think you're right. That clever little boy wants to let me know he's not pleased with me. Uh-huh. You ready to call him on it? Bring him down. All right, Space Cowboy, come on down. Breakfast is on the table. Just like we talked about last night, okay? What's this? Oh! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful day. You know, I may have to go on this rigorous physical therapy routine you're on. You look wonderful. Do I really look that different? <laughs> well, I can't put my finger on it, but there is a glow. Something's got your motor running. Actually, yesterday, I had a revelation while I was walking endlessly on that stupid treadmill. I realize that my legs aren't my only handicap, that I have two other problems here. Loneliness and near poverty. And I figured, why can't I overcome them both if I just put my mind to it? And you can. That's right. I just have to work on it as hard as I've been working on my legs. That's the right attitude. You know, it's such a shame that Serenity Springs doesn't have therapy for your heart and your pocketbook. Well, actually, while I was there yesterday, a solution presented itself. And of course, I seized the day. Well, the night, as it turns out. <laughs> Guess who wined and dined me last night at Club Indigo? Give me a hint. Okay, mm I will. He is tall. Long hair. Marches to the beat of his own drum every now and then. He's a rebel, kind of like myself. Filthy, filthy rich. And he got inherited all of his money from an infamous publishing empire. No, don't tell me you've decided to reconcile with Todd. Todd? Oh, no, no, but I didn't realize the similarity. It's not Todd. You can't guess? Ian Armitage. Oh! He's perfect. Isn't he? And he's, he's charming, he's polite. Unlike Todd. Yeah, and he's fun and... Hey, and did I mention rich? Very, very rich. Yeah. And I tell you what, Doreen, we actually had a very, very nice time. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> this could be the start of something big. <laughs> oh, great, it's the firebug. Did you keep it down? Look, it wasn't intentional. Give me a little break here. Oh, like you did Maggie, huh? I suppose you want a report on uh, my little spy mission. What is with you this morning? Well, as far as I can tell, Blair doesn't know that you set the warehouse fire. By accident. Yeah, right, whatever. Well, at least you didn't react to any of the openings that I get. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Blair can put on an act with the best of them. Well, it was a very good act, then. Mm. We went to Club Indigo. I plied her with my usual charm. We drank some excellent wine, listened to some fabulous music, had a very nice little chat, and I took her home. But, you know, frankly, even if she did overhear our conversation, no, I don't think that she would uh, want to hurt Maggie by, by making it public. Oh, really? Hmm. You don't know Blair like I know Blair. Oh, no. right, 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 yes, that's right, because I <clears throat> didn't commit adultery with her. <laughs> You are in a lousy mood this morning, but hey, sometimes Blair has an effect on people. Well, you see, Blair didn't arrange for my sister's dreams to go up in flames, almost burn her to death along with two innocent bystanders. And if you tell me that it was an accident again, okay, I will probably slug you, which is a temptation that I have been resisting ever since you dropped that little bombshell. Well, if it make you feel any better, go ahead. Oh, come on. Why on earth did you have to tell me that you rigged that blasted boiler? Now, how am I supposed to listen to Maggie mourn her lost dreams, knowing what I know? But you're my partner. I had to be honest oh, with you. Oh, please, come on. That had nothing to do with anything. You wanted someone else to shoulder some of the guilt that you felt. Well, thank you very much. No, hey, look, look, look. This doesn't have to be a disaster for Maggie. You know, we can help her out here. Who knows, in the long run, she made up with a building that has a lot less problems. We'll get our waterfront development, and everybody will end up a winner. 
As long as we can keep Blair's mouth shut, but I don't trust her for a minute. You are amazing. You have somehow managed to turn a criminal act into a good deed. All of a sudden, you are the hero, and now Blair is the villainess. Amazing. I should have never asked you to get information from her. Waste of time. Look, I will handle her from here on out. No, 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 no. That's no. no, okay. It's okay. You passed her on to me. And now, I'm quite interested. You're not serious. One Life to Live, brought to you... We're looking for Check out ABC Wednesday. Did you ever go to junior kindergarten? Uh, I must have. Hey, are you excited about today? Yes. Yeah? yeah? You know what? Every time I went to school on the first day, it was always a really big deal, so I made sure that I wore my lucky shirt. Now, is this your lucky shirt? Um, yeah. Okay, then we're set. Well, it looks like somebody drank all their milk. That's a healthy start for the first day of school. Would you like some more? Mm, yeah. Um, why don't you ask the lady with the milk? Why can't you pour it for me? Because I'm your mommy. And when you don't let me do things for you, you hurt my feelings. So on my first day of school, I used to get these butterflies in my tummy. Real butterflies? No, the kind that make you nervous and scared, and they're kind of like the feelings you get when we do Tickle Boy and Pass the Tickle Boy. Oh, it's my turn. And... <laughs> tickle, 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 Like everything went fine. Yes. <laughs> Ready, honey? Look who's here. <laughs> Looks like you got on me quickly, huh? Guys, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't want you to be late for your first day of school. Come on, let me check you out. Oh, my goodness. Hey, how you doing, River Buddy? I missed you. You ready for your first day of school? Guess what? What? Kevin says this is my lucky chair. Right, Kevin? <laughs> That's right. Hey. You have a blast, okay? It was great having you here. It was the greatest. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you can come back soon. Can I, Daddy? Your mom and I will discuss it. Come on, let's get a move on. Come here. I love you. I you love you, Have a mommy. good day. Oh. All right, we really got to go. We got to go. Ah! Okay, buddy. You'll be good now, okay? Don't forget you the backpack. Okay. Bye. <sighs> that was awkward. Uh, it'll get easier. You really caught his attention with that milk thing. You laid it right on the line. It was great. Thanks. I don't know what I would have done if he ignored me again and insisted that you pour that milk. Cass. He just wanted to know that you were still his mommy. <laughs> and I sort of enjoyed being daddy again. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that. <laughs> you know, I forgot to tell Andrew that I was going to Austria to see my father, but... Uh, you know, there's plenty of time for that. I, I have to cover Club Indigo Music Festival anyway. Sorry about that, but somebody's got to do it. And I probably should tell my mother first, because if she hears it from someone else, it'll be worse. I don't want her thinking that I'm just going there to dig in her past. Yeah, God forbid somebody do something for a reason that doesn't include your mother. Right, but Mel does have me curious. You know, there may be a secret in her childhood that... 
Oh, well, the main reason I'm going is to reconnect with David. It did go all right, didn't it? Yeah. want to tangle with Blair, believe me. Oh, I see, but it was all right for me to tangle with her when you wanted information. Well, that was for us, I mean, for Maggie. But I think Blair is utterly charming. Amanda, she have you suckered. That woman, that woman is a legendary fortune hunter descended from a long line of fortune hunters. Her Aunt Dorian wrote the book. Listen, I have been handling fortune hunters since I was in prep school or grade school or whatever you want to call it. I think I'm more than capable of protecting myself. She is not worth the trouble. You see, I disagree. She's entertaining, she's uh, intelligent, and you know, she's not exactly bad to look at. And predatory? Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of the course with the uh, uh, fortune hunter thing. And she just came out of a coma to discover that her husband ran off with his sexy lawyer and her, her little girl was taken away in a custody suit. Well, perhaps I can comfort her. I can take her to dinner. I can hold her hand, I can listen to her problems, and uh, all that. More likely, she's gonna have you for dinner. Look, Blair is trouble. Trust me on this one. You see, that's the thing, Max. I no longer know if I can trust you. You know, Ian has traveled around the entire world. He's lived in castles and mansions. He skied in the Alps, sailed in Bermuda. He's even ridden polo ponies in Argentina. <laughs> He's still the man of born. I'm telling you, in that accent, everything out of his mouth sounds, I don't know, witty, classy. And no stupid parrot. <laughs> That's a good one. So when are you going to see him again? Well, Dorian, we've made um, tentative plans, maybe to go to Club Indigo again to hear the music festival. A jazz lover. Oh, among other things. Uh, one of those things being you? Not too fast, Blair. Remember, half the fun is the chase. But you go ahead. You get involved with Ian Armitage. It'll take your mind off that ghastly mistake that was your last marriage. Yes, go ahead. Have your fun with Ian and put your past where it belongs, far behind you. Well, I have, as far as Todd is concerned, but Star is very much a part of my future. The very best part. Oh, honey, with, with Ian's billions, we could get Star away from that fiend who calls himself her father. Ian can buy and sell Todd a hundred times over. Why, with Ian's money, you could hire yourself a whole army of cutthroat lawyers, and we could rescue that poor, innocent child before it's too late. Well, besides all of that, I, I actually could have me some fun. <laughs> yes, you could. And you deserve it. <laughs> you know, Ian, he is a lot of fun. And you should just hear him laugh. And his mind is so, so sharp. Keeps me on my toes, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. After all, Ian was raised and educated in the finest schools in England. Of course, he probably feels at home with the Queen of England, you know? <laughs> Actually, he, he's just as at home in uh, Angel Square. He's, you, he's wonderful with the kids at the community center, you know? He, he agreed to be the coach. He's tough on them like crazy, but he's also gentle. He's a lot of fun to watch. I bet he is. Hands off. Subject. The View, weekdays on ABC Daytime. Excuse me? You heard me. I said hands off of Ian Armitage, Kelly. Blair, Kelly didn't say she oh, wanted Oh, no, anything. no. We all know our dear Kelly knows a good thing when she sees it. Even if it belongs to someone else. Remember Joey? <sighs> okay, Kelly. I am staking my claim on Ian Armitage right now. So you just forget about him, okay? Ian is not my I boyfriend. said you owe me big time, Kelly. Forget about Ian Armitage. Kelly only said that she oh, thought come he Come on, we all know how much Kelly lies. She lied for weeks after the accident. Don't you remember, Dorian? Ian is my friend, Blair. 
I don't even know if he is that. I hardly know him. Good. Well, let's keep it that way, shall we? This is not a contest. Right. Whether you want to believe it or not, I am not your enemy. Well, let's get something else straight, too, then. You're not my friend, either. <sighs> uh oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's all... Blair feels like she's lost everything. Star, her health, the baby. No, I know. I understand. And she hates feeling vulnerable. It makes her lash out, overreact. I understand all that. You don't need to protect me, and you don't need to make excuses for Blair. I will never stop feeling sorry for what I did to her. As it is now, Blair cannot say one single thing to make me feel any worse than I do already. But she's beginning to seriously tick me off. You see, I have this theory about you and Blair. Don't you have to be someplace? Well, the community center, but you know. You see, I think that you have to make Blair out to be this she-devil, because that way you can blame her for the affair you had while you were married to someone who you claim you loved. Would you like some other opinions? I mean, you could ask my friend Court, except he's still out of town. Better yet, why don't you go to Asa? She not only conned him, she damn near killed him. Really? After she became uh, Mrs. Buchanan? He was having a heart attack. She grabbed her fur coat, walked out, leaving him to die. She figured she'd end up a rich widow, but her plan backfired. Hmm. It's too bad. Think of the trouble it would have saved us. Hey! Hey, Max. you. Hi. You look kind of sweaty. Well, in my advancing years, my dear, I have to warm up before facing uh, an energetic squad of uh, soccer prodigies. Uh-huh. Yeah. They probably think they can earn their stripes by kicking my backside. Don't let them do it. So, how are you holding up? I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah. Please do me a favor. Tell your boyfriend that I'm a big boy, all right? I'll huh? see you later. What was that? He is convinced that Blair is utterly charming. I tried to tell him that she's predatory and she's carnivorous and to watch out. Well, that's fair warning. I hadn't realized that the two of them had even met. Oh, she spotted him in the gym yesterday and all of her questions were regarding his net worth. You can see dollar signs just rolling in your eye socket. Oh, Ian doesn't need that. No, you tell him. He thinks I'm exaggerating about her being a rattlesnake. Well, I wouldn't know about that, but I do know that a woman on the rebound of a disastrous marriage is not a good bet. A uh, betting man wouldn't touch her if it had any sense. Not that betting men have sense. You know what Ian needs? He needs a woman that's sweet and gentle who, who just wants to make him happy. Well... That is definitely not Blair. I tried to tell him, but he won't listen. No, no, he'd probably just try and prove you wrong. He's got a rebellious streak. I should know, I'm his twin. Well, why don't you try a little, uh, twin thing and see if you can redirect him? Something has got to be done about Blair and Kelly. I thought if they were forced to live together under the same roof, their love for each other would win out. But no, it's just going from bad to worse. Now, I know that you and Blair are very close. Maybe you could appeal to her and get her to go a little easier on Kelly. Okay, I'll be happy to do it. It's just it's going to have to wait till I get back from Europe. This is out of the blue. Yes, it is. It's just a short visit. I, uh... I wanted to see my father. Her? What's he doing in Europe? Not Dad. I meant David in Austria. That Dad? I didn't even know you were in contact with him. Yeah, we've sent each other an occasional birthday card, and, and um, I hadn't spoken to him in a long time, so I called him the other day. Any particular reason? No, just wanted to reconnect. I see. How is he? Uh, he's not doing that well. He, uh, he and Jenny were caught in an avalanche in the Alps. And, um, they haven't found Jenny's body yet. 
And David was terribly hurt. I'm very sorry to hear that. So, um... Is David going to be all right? I mean, aside from the fact that he's absolutely devastated about Jenny. Yeah, he's recovering. And it, it, it meant a lot to him that I called, so I thought it was important for me to go see him. Of course. Was there some other reason? Maybe it's because I want to find out about me. Why I do what I do. So I thought I'd start with my parents. David and you. You already know everything about me that you need to know. I know everything that you've chosen to tell me. That sounds exactly like Mel. Now, Mel just asked me a few questions. I knew it! No, and then I realized I didn't have enough answers. So, you decided to go hound David in Austria at a time when the man is obviously suffering? No, I mostly planned to see if I can help him. A and I want to talk to him about my life. Uh, River and my divorce and Kevin, I... I think he might relate to that since I was a product of an affair he had with you in med school. Uh, exactly what kind of information did Mel ask you to ferret out no, about No, Mother, me? this is not about Mel. This is about me. Now, I'm the one who saw your meltdown when Todd was granted custody of Star. You acted as if she was given a death sentence. The man's a depraved felon. No, Mother, we have been over this and over this. Come on, he has never hurt Star. You act terrified for her. And I thought maybe it was because David had taken me away from you when I was a child. That's no secret. I told you all about it. And I thought, by now, you might have gotten over your abandonment issues. What about your feelings? Maybe it's just because I'm a mother now, but the idea of losing a child for 15 years and not knowing if it was happy or safe or even alive... There was never a day when I didn't think about you. And the only thing that helped me survive is that I remembered that despite the fact that David had stolen you away from me, he loved you very much. But you said it wasn't your choice. No, see, Mother, I don't want to get you upset. That's why I want to go talk to David. You know everything, okay? There is nothing more for you to be told. Subject, closed. Are you telling me not to go? Well, I think it's really an awful time for you to leave River. No, Mother, it's a perfect time for me to leave River. He's starting school, and this may relieve a little tension between Andrew and this me. This is so typical of you. You get an idea into your head, and then you go running off in any direction, despite the consequences. This trip is positively frivolous. You are telling me not to go. Yes. You have no right to do that. I am asking you, as your mother, who loves you very much. David's my father. So your mind is made up? Yes, I guess it is. <clears throat> I love you very much, too. Oh. Like you. I need to see you. Well, uh, how about lunch? Right away. Oh, I've got this story to file. Just give me about an hour, honey, okay? Mel, please. Uh, okay, I'm on my way. You want me to move in with Mrs. Vega? Fine. Don't expect me to go to school right away. That's just way too much. You rely, it's not my idea. It's the school board and it's the law. And you don't want to miss your freshman year of high school. It's a cool time. There's nothing cool about school, okay? It's a great place to meet friends. Now you're going to have a home to bring them back to. You can hang out at the diner, play ball here at the center. Yeah, really lame. What do you care anyway? You're giving me away. Hey, I probably care more about you than anyone in your life right now. That's not saying much, is it? Not saying much. It's saying a lot coming from Eli. 
You see this sign on my chest? What does it say? It says, don't disturb the man in misery. Join the club. So we understand each other, don't we? It's easy to shut down, Eli. But I see a great kid underneath all that attitude. I want to give that kid a chance to, to be safe, to be happy, maybe even be loved. Yeah, right. Till the next guy passes on me, dies. I'm not passing on you. I just, I honestly don't think I'd be a good parent for you right now. Well, maybe I think so. Yeah, well, maybe I know better. And maybe Carlotta knows better than both of us. She raised two great teenage boys. She is part... God, you, know, you have a chance to be part of a solid family. That's a good deal. Well, I like your deal better. <sighs> My life is in shambles right now. I am going back and forth between rage and guilt. You saw it for yourself when we dropped River off. I've got a double whammy of both those feelings. I don't have a thing to give you right now. Maybe that's all I need. Don't you ever sell yourself short. Give me your best shot. Come on. Hey, Eli, how you doing? Eli, you uh, here for the football practice? Come on. Huh? It's a bit of work. have it up and running in a few minutes. Okay, well, I guess I will just go over here and work on my leg extensions for a while then. Looks like you made a lot of progress. Yeah, I'm motivated. Or you went to the Club Indigo last night. Yep. Have fun? The music was great. Yeah. How'd you like it, Ian? Oh. She was great too, Max. Look, I think there's too much weight over here. Could you come over here and fix it for me, please? You know, Ian's my business partner, and he's Maggie's twin. Oh, Max. What? Ian, we were just discussing him, weren't we? Oh, yeah, right. Ian. But it, oh, that's much, much better. Thank you. You heard the story, I guess. You know, his parents are dead. Never knew his real father or that he had a twin sister. Huh. Really, really seems to have adjusted. Hmm. Huh. Really. Actually, it's quite unpredictable. I thought I should warn you for old time's sake. Warn me? Warn me about what? Oh, women just throw themselves at him right and left. I guess it could be the money. Or maybe his continental charm, but... Either way, he's a bit of a rake. Just loves to love them and leave them. Gets bored very easily. Uh, oh, yeah, Do I really need to know all of this? Nah, I guess not. He's not your type. You like to do the loving and leaving. You know, Max, I get the distinct impression that you don't want me to go out with your partner. You're absolutely right. Oh. What's so funny? Oh, Max, you are funny. You, because you are so transparent. I know what you want. What? Ian's money. And you're just afraid I'm going to beat you to it. Nah. Yeah. Not my type, either. Oh, Max. You're still the con artist. Takes one to know me. You know, Max, I know that you would do anything for that waterfront project of yours. In fact, you already have. So what, are you afraid that I'm going to distract your partner and he's going to back out of the deal? Wow, now that would be really too bad, considering how much you've risked to have it. Well, life is a risk, Blair. Yeah. I guess it uh, depends on who you are and what you know. I told Ian you trouble. <laughs> you told him that I was trouble? Mm -hmm. Max, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. That was a, a compliment, wasn't it? Oh, partly. Oh, good. Partly. 
see, I don't uh, wish your kind of trouble on him, nor his on you. I didn't know you cared, man. Oh, I do. I really do. See, I think you need a break from, from all the rigors of fortune hunting after your disasters with Ace and Todd. You know, Max, don't tell me what I need unless you know what it's like to feel pain in your life every single minute. And with every spasm, know what you've left behind. The life that you once had. Like an unborn baby, star. You know, I get to sit on the sidelines and watch Taya sashay around, flashing that big ring, pushing a stroller with my little girl in it as if she owned her. And then I get to realize that every night that Todd and her put my little girl to bed and kiss her good night. Now, I tell you, I know what I need. I need revenge. Yeah. And they say living well is the best revenge. And yeah, Max, I want it all. I want every bit of it. And I'm going to grab every chance of happiness I can, OK? And as usual, you don't care who gets hurt along the way. Why don't you cut it out, Max? And don't pretend that you care about poor Ian and his money. Because we both know why you don't want me near Ian. So why don't you just confess it, huh? Confess it right now, OK? Come on. I guess everyone's running a bit late, or maybe I'm early. Oh. Hi. You, you look great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, do you want to uh, warm up on me? Oh, is that some sort of a challenge? Hmm? Well, I'm ready for you, right. soccer god. All right, you ready? There it okay, is. Okay, there it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I need hey, to take hey, it. hey, 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 hey. No hands. Why? Well, those are the rules, remember? <gasps> okay. 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 Start again. Start again. Ready? Okay. Ready? Go. 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 <laughs> wait, wait, give me the... Whoa. I got you! <laughs> well, that would be the, uh, the other football, but I must say, I, uh, do like it. <laughs> I, 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 well, yeah, we were just sort of uh, warming up. <laughs> I see. I have the cheese. Well, I mean, slightly. <laughs> well, you just haven't seen all my moves. Well, I'm more than willing to learn. Okay. Well, uh, I'll give you a rematch any time. Rematch. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sis. What uh, Hello. brings you down here? Oh, I just I brought a little basket from Rodie's for the kids after practice. I bet they woke up an appetite, huh? Yeah. What's um? What's for the kid. I'm a kid. Yeah, all six feet four of you. Kid of heart? Me too. <laughs> yeah? All right, kiddies, I have an idea. You want to come out and play with me and Max tonight? We have a table at the Club Indigo Music Festival opening. Oh, oh it's um, Erica Badu, right? Yes. Oh, love her. You want to come and join us? Well, I had um, made plans to go to the festival with, uh, with someone else. The festival's going on for quite some time. Is this a specific commitment for tonight? Uh, no. Oh, well, then, because if you want a table tonight, you're out of luck. They're, they're sold out for the opening. Really? Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I can bow out. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. I mean, you're a Badu fan. I am, certainly. Um, okay, Mags, you're on. Mm, wow, well, that's just wonderful. And just what am I supposed to confess? Maxie, I know why you don't want me near Ian. Because he's Maggie's twin brother. And that would be just a little too close for comfort. Oh. Why? <laughs> because I know too much. Blair, what do you think you know? All about you, Max. And that would be way too much for any woman you love to find out. 
Why don't you just spell it out, Blair? <laughs> oh, because I love to keep you wondering. Yeah. Huh. This has been a very productive session, Max. Thanks. See you around. What's wrong? Is it Blair? Star? Why are you doing this to me? Tell me what I've done. You are chipping away at me emotionally, and it hurts. Honey, I would never hurt you intentionally. Oh, really? Then why have you gone behind my back and asked my daughter to spy on me? I asked Cassie a few questions, that's all. And as a result, she has contacted her biological father, and she's uh, off to Austria. I'm sure she has her own agenda. Yes, and so do you. And you don't seem to care if that agenda is violating my privacy. If I take a stack of your papers and I move it from one end of the table to the other, you don't like that, and yet you feel you have the right to dig into my personal life when I tell you I don't want you to? The difference is that you understand how important that stack of papers is to me, but I don't know what's buried in your past. I don't know how vitally important it is for you to protect it. And I'm beginning to suspect you don't either. What can I say? What can I do to make you stop this? What if I said I won't? I can't. For your sake. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.